Hello and welcome back. I do hope that you're taking good care of yourself. And in fact, we are now really in some lessons where for some of you uh, in going back to dating, this can be a fun and exciting time. We do want to make sure that, that you do have your awareness of something I call the gigolo effect. And you know, you're ready now to be back dating again, um, starting to learn to um, get to know others. And as you are getting to know someone who is really, um, I call them charismatic, right? So there's somebody who you instantly like. You, you like them a lot, in fact, in a very short period of time. And they usually are showing up in more of a, um, a materialistic way, in fact, a lot of times they aren't buying the, the dates that you're going on. They are not paying for food or drink or movie or whatever it is that the expense is of the date. And so I'm, I'm giving you little hints on how do we really recognize someone who might be a gigolo. And so in the recognition, you, you may be asking your friends and family, what do they think of this gentleman? And they might be saying, we really like him. And that can be a good thing. So there's nothing wrong with that. Don't, don't put up the red flags yet. However, one of the litmus tests, meaning let's find out if this is someone who might be just there for your money as opposed to for you as a person. Um, as you're going out on the dates, are you uh, having him pay for some of it? Is he having you pay for everything? It doesn't have to be 50-50, right? It, it can be a little bit from you and a little bit from him, or you pay for your own. But a lot of times the gigolos fairly early on will have you pay for most everything. And as a widow, it's easy to say, oh, but I just really love being with this person. They make me feel so good. And I want to go out with them again. And I'm willing to pay for the movie or the, the, the food. And, and I recognize that he doesn't have as much money as me or whatever the reason is that you're saying, oh, I'll pay. He won't. But take a good long look because a lot of times on the gigolos, and these are the people um, who really are just, I mean, as soon as money runs out or as soon as something isn't going right, they're not in it for the long haul. That's why I want to say, let's make sure that we're looking for the signs of this type of personality so that you can make a decision. And, and if your decision is, I know he might leave when things get bad and I'm okay with that and I'm willing to go through the heartache of that because believe me, you can get really attached to these guys because they are so much fun to be with and you can't wait to get on the phone with them and get be with them again. So one of the things is, is uh, as I had said in the last lesson, is to have when, you, when you're being introduced to someone to go on a date and to get to learn about them. If you're asking your community to do the introductions, that's better because they usually will know where they're from, what their background is, you know, do they have money or not? And not that that's important, but when they know that this type of person um, has more of a long-term relationship, if that's what you're looking for, rather than he's bouncing from woman to woman when the opportunity is better or, or that the money ran out. So really relying on your community to introduce you to the right type of people will help your heartache and also help your pocketbook from not being stolen from and you having a future that you have no, little to no money because of a small mistake that you made because of your heart. And I've watched people do this and it is, it is a devastating financially thing to go through. So I just wanted to highlight what is um, a gigolo, how to kind of spot them, have your community help you. And one of the things that I started doing when I was learning to meet someone new, and maybe even for the second or third time, is to just meet them for a cup of coffee. I, I did mention this before, but really it's important. If don't commit to let's meet in the evening and we're going to spend an hour together, because you could probably tell just by sitting down for just a moment, 
already if you would like to be with them for a longer period of time or even to see them again. So a 10 minute, 15 minute, maybe commit to a 30 minute, we'll meet at the whatever coffee house or someplace where you know it, it there will be other people there. You can have a, a small chat to decide if you wanna go ahead and see each other again and create that next date. I would also suggest not doing alcohol. The alcohol can inhibit you, as you know, and you might make some bad decisions. So doing the, the coffee type thing, so non-alcohol beverage and or you know food or something like that where it's a short visit, but you're um, no alcohol, at least in the first couple of dates. I hope that you find this helpful and I look forward to our next session.